hey, my name's Heidi, and I just flew in from St. Louis last night, and boy, are my arms tired. That's because I was at Strange Loop giving a two and a half hour version of this 10 minute talk. So we're gonna go uh, and address some of the top things that were interesting to the people there. I work for LaunchDarkly as a transformation advocate because like we've been saying, sometimes pulling people along the transformation path is difficult and we have to talk to them in the language that they're used to. So that's what I do. So why are you here? Well, first of all, you didn't click away after Brian's excellent talk, and you aren't necessarily going to get yourself a cup of coffee right now. That's why you're here. Uh, or you've had a documentation-related incident, either where documentation would have saved you or where documentation screwed you up. Or you are, in the future, going to have a documentation-related incident where documentation saves you or screws you up. Those are pretty much the only options, just like all systems only have a currently upstate. So why should you be here? You should be here because, did I mention, the Google Accelerate State of DevOps report, formerly known as DORA, uh, I think we should maybe just get them a really cool icon like Prince, but that's because I'm from Minneapolis. It dropped and they had a lot of really interesting things to say about what documentation does for your DevOps team. And you should also be here because documentation is just guardrails for all of the things that go wrong in life. Like all of you who wanted to listen to this talk and idly scroll Instagram or Facebook can't do it right now because Facebook is having an incident. I'm not saying documentation would save a multinational, multi-billion dollar corporation from having incidents. I'm saying right now, there are a lot of very stressed out SREs reading documents on how to get back up. So here's what the DORA report says about documentation. And when they're talking about documentation, they're not talking about the external customer facing documentation. They're talking about internal team documentation, the documentation that we write for ourselves. I found this really fascinating that you could use documentation to accelerate, to go faster, to get up faster, to recover from incidents faster, to implement things faster. I mean, I spent 20 years as a technical writer. I could have told you that, but they surveyed a bunch of people and came up with the same answer. And now I feel externally validated. So documentation is not easy. You should just hire a professional to do it, but I know you're not going to because that's not how it works. So let's talk about what actually useful documentation could be. Like there's a lot of kinds of documentation, so much documentation. We used to put it in three ring binders so that we could put our coffee mugs on it. It was very comforting. But here's some actually useful documentation. The first thing is pre-automation. Like what are you going to automate? What do you have that needs automation? Where are you going to go? Because if you write down the steps, then you can automate them. And then you can make it something that you don't have to think about anymore. And automation is a form of documentation. It's necessary, but not sufficient maybe for automated documentation blending. So the first thing I wanna say is like, write down what it is you need to automate so that you can automate it effectively. And second, are your socio-technical processes. We've talked a lot about what DevOps means, but the core definition that I keep coming back to says people and processes. And people and processes are the exact things that you can't automate. You can't really automate the things that people feel. Much as we would all like to be living in robot bodies, we're not. And so what we need to automate is the way you actually get things, or what we need to document is the way we actually get things done. Who do you ask for a resource? How do you get to that thing? What is the process that makes this possible? So when you're thinking about what to document, the, the most useful thing is sort of a replication of if you ever went to college, you might have had that one department secretary who knew everything and could answer your question instantly as long as you were polite to her. 
we need to be documenting that because we don't have the one all knowing source of knowledge sitting in a desk in the middle of the department. What we have is a wiki and we need to put those processes in some place that other people can find them. And finally, you want to you want to document things that you are going to read with a flashlight in your mouth. These are the things that you must know to get your system back up. And up has a variety of meanings in a variety of situations. So like hopefully you have an entirely lost power. Hopefully you are not literally reading documentation with a flashlight in your mouth. But if there were documents that you might need that way, are they written down? And are they written down somewhere that isn't on the system that they're documenting? This is a, a fundamental reliability problem. I won't say resilience, but like robustness involves sometimes you have to print things out because sometimes you can't trust computers. They're squirrely little devils. H how do? How do you write all this down? How do you know what needs to be written down? How do you keep it up to date? How do you make sure that it isn't wrong? How do you make more of it? How do you know when you need to throw it away? It's all very complicated. So first, mine your best incidents or your past incidents. If something has gone wrong, hopefully you wrote a post-incident report about it. But if you're like most people, you then filed that in the wiki and never read it again. Instead, I want you to go back and actually put those things in the live documentation, not just in the done with that, never have to think about it again. I want you to leverage onboarding. Every time you get someone new to the team, you give them all the documentation you have and say, your responsibility for the first week is to figure out all the places this is wrong and get help fixing them. You don't have to fix it yourself, but you have to find the places that the map does not match the territory and tell us about them because we know these systems. We have the curse of knowledge. We, we already feel okay about this. No, we need to take those fresh eyes and use that onboarding time to really up-level our documentation. Then we need to iterate on all of the, the folk knowledge that you have, the post-its and the, the scratch pages and the like notes files, whatever it is that you have, you have to gather those up because those are frequently the source of the most important things. Like I have a post-it on my computer that says, turn on, a, uh, I even forget the name of it. There's a thing that I have to, a button I have to push to make my speaker work. It doesn't come on automatically. My microphone doesn't come on and I can't figure out why I have to push the button. So now I have a sticky note. You need to write that down because it's important. Buy a book about it. I'll get to that in a minute or hire a writer. You are allowed to hire tech writers. You should pay them about the same as a developer of equivalent experience because they are going to save more than a developer's worth of time doing the work that they know how to do well. So consider just saving money and time by hiring a writer. So furthermore, documentation is like laundry. It's never done and it's never over. The moment you put something in the washing machine, you are also still wearing things. There's, there's no done state for documentation. So never feel like you get out of it because you don't. This is just an ongoing part of everything that you do is documenting it at least a little bit. And I said I would get to this. My team and I wrote a book called Docs for Developers. It's available for pre-order now. I'm super excited about it. And it's about where to start when you are a developer and don't know how to. And I I'm really hoping that it's going to help a lot of people who don't have the opportunity to hire a writer. If you want more information on what I'm doing about transformation and the software development lifecycle and CICD, you can go ahead and follow this link. Thank you so much for your time. I am excited to see you at DevOps Loop. I will see you at a panel and DevOps party games later on because I am fully committed to this conference. Talk to you all later. Bye.